So just to introduce our panel then, we have Lawrence Cummings, who you will all know um, because you'll be follow you'll have been, been following him on the videos, and he is the um, musical director of the London Handel Festival and does our in-person come and sing events, uh, which are incredibly popular and obviously directed our inaugural Masai Reimagined on the 3rd of December, which is still available to view. You can see that on our YouTube channel. Um, then we have Sue Hollingworth from Scunthorpe Choral Society. Welcome, Sue. Uh, we have Ben Parry from the National Youth Choirs of Great Britain. Welcome, Ben. Thank and um, we have Ralph Allwood, who a lot of you will recognise because he directed the Rodolphus Choir in last time's Masari Imagine. And this time it's the old Royal Naval College Chapel Choir he is directing. So I will just plough in with my questions and I'll pick on Lawrence first because he knows that uh, the answer, he's already thought about this, I'm sure. Um, so the project Messiah Reimagined, when we first started talking about it, which was several months ago, Lawrence, what was your kind of initial thought about this project? Well, yes, it's, it's um, funny in these times, isn't it, to cast your mind back because, um, you know, it's such a long, expanse of time has, has taken place and actually very little has happened. Um, so I think probably when, if I'm brutally honest, when we first talked about it, I, I was rather depressed because I, I actually thought, gosh, this is, this is the way we're going to be making music for some time to come. Um, How is this going to be? But of course, as soon as we got into it and started planning it, thinking, well, this is amazing because we'll be able to reach out to so many um, people who who we otherwise wouldn't wouldn't meet or wouldn't be able to take part in, in one particular performance you know I mean I'm very lucky I've got to do Messiah all around the world in fact but but you know to, to actually bring all these partners together um, suddenly became a very uh, exciting proposition um, and of course thanks to you Samir and the, and the team for, for making it possible because um, that was the other thing we weren't sure how <laughs> how logistically um, it was going to be so I think we all thought we were slightly crazy but then I, I was thinking in fact just talk, talking to Sue thinking back to other crazy projects to do with Messiah um, she and I were involved in this wonderful Sing Hallelujah um, 11 years ago now I think it is where a thousand people came together uh, in the Colosseum, and and so so the, the idea of bringing people together for this piece is is nothing new, and I think um, it, it's it's been a very exciting proposition of, ever since you you first brought it up. Brilliant, thanks so much, Lawrence. Um, so who shall I pick on next? How about Sue? Sue, um, up in Scunthorpe, what was your uh, initial impression when we approached you about this project? Well. I was really excited because actually we had um, about five from Scunthorpe Choral Society who sang in the Stay at Home Choir in November. And because I knew that we we're going to do that, we did actually rehearse up the choruses. We thought we'll just give them a, a sort of fighting chance, even though they knew them. But the whole choir on Zoom, we rehearsed along with them and about five of them did it. And then when you uh, approached us and said, would we like to actually be a choral partner? I think we were all really excited excited and we've actually formed a consortium up in Scunthorpe so we've got uh, Scunthorpe and District Choral Society, the Scunthorpe Cooperative Junior Choir and uh, um, a, a little chamber choir which um, I also do so we've, we're kind of a Scunthorpe consortium up here that, um, that are all doing this project together. Brilliant, thank you. And then from the regional to the national, Ben, um, National Youth Choirs of Great Britain, and we, we were very keen to involve young singers, and this has been a particular strength of this project. And presumably a lot of your singers have not sung Messiah in its entirety before. So how, how, how did they react? How did you react? We don't know how they've reacted yet uh, because they haven't been told. <laughs> yeah, but but actually, I, I lie. The, 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 the member representatives um, know about this and I think they've been sharing it secretly on Facebook. But um, I saw your first one last year. In fact, I must declare an interest because my wife is a violinist and she was playing in the live orchestra in the church. And I think one of the things, as Lawrence was saying, that we've learned to do um, during the pandemic is is adapt to different ways of doing things and um, I watched it through from beginning to end because I was I was mesmerized by it um, not an easy thing to do obviously you know from going from a from a, a solo to a chorus but actually 
the technology worked amazingly well. And I guess shout out to your amazing guys who, who worked on that. Um, I'm so pleased that you, you approached us, Samir, because I think um, one of the things about this piece and its endurance, and I know we're going to talk about that a little bit later, is that it appeals to multi-generation, um, whether you're young, whether you're old, whether you're in the middle somewhere. Um, the music is so singable, it has such a strong message. And I think for a youth choir to be involved is, is a wonderful thing. Um, we are keeping our fingers crossed that we are going to be able in some way to sing live rather than individually and put together a grid choir, because I think everybody would admit they're a bit tired of grid choirs. It's such hard work. So we're hoping that we might actually record this and film it live for you, which would be such an amazing thing for the singers of the National Youth Choir, simply because the last time they got together in a room was the Christmas before last, um, which is such a long time ago. Um, so we're delighted. We can't wait to be part of this amazing project. Thank you. Thanks so much, Ben. And, and fingers crossed that um, you will get to have everyone live. But I know you've got plan A, plan B, plan C, like most of us have. <laughs> um, and then Ralph. Um, so I have to say that it's because of you and your amazing choir, Rodolphus, that this idea has come about because I took part in your virtual even song many months ago. And we're using the same technical team, which is uh, Alex James and the and, uh, specialist students from the University of Surrey. But Ralph, you've already taken part in this and you're taking part again. I mean, is, is that madness or, or you are you a glutton for punishment or, or were you so invigorated the first time that you had to do it again? Well, it's just a, such a lovely project and Messiah is a, just a wonderful, timeless piece and they all love it. And so, um, my, I wanted to involve Old Royal Naval College Trinity Lardman Chapel Choir, which is the choir with the longest name in the world. <laughs> and um, it's, um, and they're a lovely lot because it's actually also the only conservatoire chapel choir in, in the world. And I've said that over and over again, and I haven't been contradicted. If anyone can contradict me and tell me another one, I'd be very, very pleased to hear. Well, no, I wouldn't be very pleased, but I want to hear. Um, and, um, Yes, we've done stuff with Rodolphus as well. Um, I'm involved in another project, which is getting hymns together, getting everybody to sing hymns. But I think one of the wonderful things about the, your project um, and similar ones is the number of people who can actually join in and sing who thought they couldn't sing. I've heard so many stories of, I was told I was tone deaf. I'm sure the choral directors among us and the teachers will be horrified at that, that, that people can be told they're toned up. Or I was told to mime in my school choir, dreadful. And some people like that have suddenly realized that they actually can sing and they've joined in. And being at home with friends, they can have a go at it, be embarrassed, and then suddenly realize they can match pitch. So I'm thrilled with this and, and it, it's wonderful that so many people can come along and do it. And I think it's gonna have a good effect in the future as well on our singing. Great, thanks Ralph. And we'll just stick with you for my next question. I'll, I'll come to the choral directors in, in reverse because you know, Rodolphus uh, have done virtual choir projects. Um, and can you tell us, I mean, please do, do tell the assembled masses about your hymn project because that sounded really interesting. But Thank what you. have your different choirs been doing in lockdown? I mean, how have you managed to keep up the interest with them all? Well, Rodolphus is really a list. It's people who've been on choral courses. So we are proposing to do choral courses properly live in the summer. Rodolphus, R-O-D-O-L-F-U-S, Rodolphus. Um, and um, bookings open at the moment. You come and spend a week of intense singing. Um, and many people here will have done that uh, at some stage. Um, the um, Old Royal Naval College Chapel Choir also um, have been doing some, some stuff. We, we rehearse every week and we did sing when we were allowed to, just half the choir spaced out because we've got a wonderful big balcony right the way around at the outside. It's a beautiful Wren Chapel um, in Greenwich and um, even songs on Monday um, and uh, services on Sunday morning as well. And so we, that's what we did then. But since the stricter lockdown, we've just had a rehearsal each week. Um, then in Cambridge, my choir at Queen's College 
haven't done that much because we're, you know, being a university, we're very strict about who comes together. But we've done a few online things and some carols and put them together. Um, and um, then I've got quite a few choirs. So there's inner voices as well. We, we sang outside in, I live in Eccleston Square and the gardens there. And we all got together and sang something for a film. You know, it's been very exciting. We've done different things that we wouldn't otherwise do. And lots of online stuff with Pimlico. I do a Pimlico Musical Foundation and for children, who, again, who wouldn't normally sing in their schools and got them all singing. And we, we're, we're online and I was teaching theory to some of them yesterday and uh, that goes pretty well and everybody's grateful for it. Anyway, and you said hymns, we've got, there's a thing called the Self-Isolation Choir and um, we, we're doing a, um, a thing of hymns and if anybody would like to join in, I'd be very pleased to hear. We've got eight cathedrals producing eight wonderful accompaniments to great hymns including Washington Cathedral and Belfast and Clanduff and various people announcing things, Stephen Fry is announcing and Wynne Evans, the Go Compare Man is announcing. And, um, and we then um, put them all together and we, we reckon we probably get a, around a thousand people to do it. And so, so we can give you further details to that if you like. So it's just so much that we wouldn't have done otherwise. So I don't actually say thank you virus, but I say that we've made a lot of, you know, we, the human ingenuity is astonishing. Brilliant, thank you, Ralph. Um, and Ben, with National Youth Choirs of Great Britain, obviously a very full calendar in ordinary times. I know that you had to cancel a whole load of gigs at the Royal Albert Hall, which must have been very disappointing. But I know equally, as Ralph has said with his choirs, you've been active in different ways. So can you uh, share with us some of your activity? Sure. Yeah, I mean, off the back of what Ralph was saying just then, you know, human ingenuity and the idea of adaptability, um, we were all, we were due to, to, to do spring and summer courses last year. Um, in fact, the last thing that one of our choirs sang was, was Speminalium um, in Saffron Hall um, in East Anglia, uh, and that was our chamber choir, and that was the last thing we did all together in a room. And with about two weeks notice, we, we put together an amazing suite of courses online for the spring and then had a few months just to kind of review and refresh and think what worked and think what didn't. So when the summer came along, we did a similar thing, um, all online, um, same as Ralph. But in fact, um, I mean, one, one of the positive things about doing it online is you can invite people from anywhere in the world to come and join you. So we had a wonderful, um, composer, songwriter called Anders Edenroth, who is an amazing uh, singer and songwriter who sings in The Real Group, which is a wonderful uh, vocal group from Sweden. We had Sophie Genin, who conducts the BBC Singer. She was in France at the time. We had Anthony, Anthony Tresset King, who is an, a brilliant conductor in Boston, Massachusetts, who came and joined us and talked about African-American music. So, you know, you, you can draw favours from virtually anyone I should think in fact I should mention Jacob Collier as well he came and he came and did a session with us and wrote a uh, and recorded a piece in front of our very eyes in 45 minutes it was just extraordinary um we had one tiny glimmer of light in October um when sort of at the end of the uh, when the spike had gone right down and before things began to get bad again um where we had a three-day residency at the wonderful snake maltings up in Suffolk um, where Benjamin Britten had his Albra Festival. And we managed to get 12 of our singers, plus our four young composers together in a room at the same time for three days. And it was a, it was a wonderful little glimmer of what might be possible. We had screens up, we had social distancing, we had sanitation, uh, sanitization and so on. It was, it, was, it was as safe as we could make it. But I, I, the most telling thing about that was when we did a little performance um, on the third day, just the 20 people who were all sitting separately. And we sang a piece at the beginning. And it was that moment, you know, as, as choral um, singers and musicians, that when the, when the last chord fades away, and there's just that moment before people applaud. And honestly, I could feel the air in the room vibrate. It was an extraordinary experience. And then of course, everybody applauded. And I mean, we all burst into tears because it was so, it was so emotional. It was extraordinary just to be able to do that. Um, and then, as you said, uh, just ready to do 11 Christmas concerts at the Royal Albert Hall and the week before they were all probably less than a week, actually, they were all cancelled. <coughs> so very, very difficult times, but we have managed to adapt. And again, as Ralph was saying, I, I, I run a 
choir in Cambridge as well, the mixed voice choir at King's College Cambridge. We managed to squeeze in four even songs last term, but it's all, a King's College Chapel is shut. Can you believe it? Um, it's just extraordinary, unprecedented times, but let's hope that that things improve and by the summer we're, we're back up and running in some sort of new normal. Indeed, thanks, Ben. Um, and Sue, with, with your choir, you've actually managed to, I mean, I know you've kind of kept up with uh, regular Zoom rehearsals. Uh, have you actually managed to meet in person at all during lockdown? No, we, no, we haven't met in person, but we've, we've had guest speakers every week. Um, so we've had speakers that would never arrive in Scunthorpe, arriving on a Thursday. Ralph's come, you've come, uh, but lots of other people. And that's that's actually been fantastic. And the junior choir have done the same. So they they too have had speakers every week. And that's really kept the, the rehearsal quite fresh. We've also done something else. We've uh, commissioned some new music. Um, the Choral Society have commissioned a, a piece, Freedom from Lockdown. Um, we haven't yet done it, but it's waiting. And um, the junior choir are going to be 100 years old in a couple of years and they're commissioning a piece and the poet um, actually has turned up and, and spoken to those choristers to get some ideas about what to do in her poem and I've just seen it this week, it is amazing. Um, so with input from the choir, so that's been quite exciting. So in fact, oh, and another commission with Charlotte Harding, that's for the Choral Society too, with Lincoln Choral Society and she's going to do a piece about the River Trent, the River Humber and the River Ouse where they meet and she came for ideas to the choristers as well so that's been that's been really that's been really fun so everyone's had some input into these commissions. Brilliant thank you and, and then Lawrence obviously you, you would have an, an international you know, diary gigs all over the world, really. Um, in terms of what you personally have been doing, and you very kindly recorded some um, excerpts from Suites for Harpsichord for us in the early days of lockdown. But in, in these last few months, I think things have been picking up again. Yes, I've been lucky to do some um, live things, actually, uh, with some ch chamber chamber events. Obviously, we, we did Alma Sire in December. That was... Um, incredible to be able to do that. Um, I've been involved in some uh, online recording for, uh, I'm, I'm involved in a project at the moment um, with uh, an orchestra, so with, we're preparing the um, sonata, the obligato sonata of Bach, uh, the flute sonata in, in uh, B minor. So in fact, uh, straight after this, I've got to go and record the, um, the tracks on my own, of course. Um, which is challenging for, for lots of different reasons, but, but a, a great, exciting project to be doing. Again, that's through um, the Self-Isolation Orchestra, in fact. Um, and yes, it's, it's, it's just a question of, of um, being in touch with colleagues, planning, planning things. Obviously, we've been thinking about way, the way that the London Handel Festival will um, be able to operate, uh, looking forward to the future. Um, and collaborating, collaborating where it's possible, really. So I, I'm very lucky. I've actually got two concerts coming up. I've got one on Friday uh, in Cambridge. Um, it's a chamber chamber concert with the Academy of Ancient Music. Um, and then uh, the following week, as part of the Bath Bach, sorry, the the Bath Festival, um, we're doing a concert with the English concert. Um, so that's been my two little shiny beacons to, to keep myself going um but uh you know it's, it's 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 a question of really obviously keeping your own musical ideas going um lots of things have been postponed uh, the whole year feels like it's kind of falling down a hill <laughs> but hopefully all the things will happen at some point um you know, it was a sad day for us, wasn't it, when we had to postpone the the, the singing competition, the handle singing competition. But but it, it's always more um, refreshing to think of a postponing rather than a cancelling. So um, you know, I think uh, there's there's so much to look forward to, um, and uh, I'm, I'm grateful for everything I've been able to do in lockdown. Thanks, Lawrence, and thanks for mentioning the the singing competition. Um, I, I suspect most of people on the call aren't aware that. Uh, 
uh, as part of the annual London Handel Festival, we organize an international singing competition. Uh, and you can watch the final of that on YouTube. It's on our YouTube channel. And we, we managed to have the final finally on the 2nd of December, so the day before the 3rd. And the same technical crew were there filming it all. Um, and it was a really, really special occasion for young finalists. Um, and we, we had 170 people apply for this year's competition. But as Lawrence says, we've had to put it all on hold, mainly because of travel restrictions, because they're, they're coming from 36 countries across the world and there's so many travel restrictions in place. So even to get to the first round would involve quite a lot of uh, jumping over hurdles. So we've postponed all of that until we until travel restrictions are, are eased. Um, but sticking with the singing competition, three out of the four soloists we had on the 3rd of December were alumni from our competition and all four on the 5th of April are alumni as well. And I think most of you know, we've got an amazing lineup of solos. We've got Lucy Crow, we have Yestin Davis, we have Nathan Vale, and we have Edward Grint. And it's gonna be just such a pleasure to hear all four of them sing those uh, particular arias, I, I can't wait. So turning to my next question, and I'll, I'll pick on Sue randomly to start this one off. Right. Um, uh, virtual choirs, um, what is your personal opinion of them and what are the kind of pros and cons of virtual choirs? Uh, the, the pros is you don't really need to travel to go anywhere, you know people are at home, so uh, you know that it's easy to turn up. Um, it, we've got deep snow here, you know, we can still all turn up on Thursday to a rehearsal um, from our dining room or wherever we are. Um, I think the con is, of course, I can't really hear what's going on. I just have to hope it's going on. And I can see people's faces. I can see I can see them singing, but I just can't really hear what's happening. And I do find them quite exhausting from that point of view, actually. I'm sort of working away and I'm not quite, not quite sure uh, quite what's going on. So that's a bit of a con. Um, but uh, I th um, there are pros and, and, and definitely of, of our, um, all our visitors that have come to talk to us have been a pro um, this year. It's been really amazing, who, you know, and last year who turned up to talk to us. Thanks, Sue. Um, we'd love to hear from all of you on, on the call as well. I mean, please post your comments in the chat. You know, are you a fan of virtual choirs? Presumably you are because you being on this call shows that you're taking part in a virtual choir. Um, but what are the kind of cons as well? And, and do, we, do you feel that virtual choirs are here to stay? Some of these choirs that have started during the pandemic are going to carry on going and we are going to keep on going with our Messiah Reimagined project as well, even when we're kind of back to normal. Um, and Ralph, you obviously um, have done a lot of virtual choir projects over the last few months. So presumably you're quite a fan of them. Well, yes, I think it's brought a lot of people into singing who wouldn't otherwise have been, and it will do as well. But also the sort of thing we can do is if we if people getting together from long distances. OK, if you're a local choir, we, it's very easy to get together, local church, lovely to get together in the local church. But if you're a choir from farther afield, you can rehearse it and for tours as well. You don't have to have three days of rehearsing beforehand we've worked out how to have to rehearse it so everybody knows it and we all have to prove we know it because we sing it into the mix and then a mix is made um, and just the same as we do for these virtual things then people meet together um, having shown that they can do it meet together and we sing the program properly I don't say that's the ideal way of doing it, but it's it's often a better way of doing it if, if you don't want to all to find accommodation somewhere and spend three days rehearsing. And if we go abroad as well, that's a good way of having the preliminary few days rehearsal. Um, anyway, I hope that we might do that um, for a bit when we when we get together. But of course, there's nothing to uh, substitute for the wonderful sound of a choir singing in a beautiful building. Yeah, yeah. Indeed. And any specific cons that you've come across or things that you would look to try and improve as you, you know, it's a new technique for all of us, isn't it? Oh, I'm sure somebody's going to work out the delay. Maybe they have. Maybe somebody can tell me that it that it's being worked at. But that's um, um, I, I read 
a lot of Matt Ridley on innovation and he's so sound on innovation and how it works and how when something is needed, somebody comes up trumps and, it, and it's, um, um, it's solved. But I think obviously one would like to hear everybody singing together when, when they're practicing and there will be ways of, of um, helping people to sing it better. There'll be, this is just off the top of my head, there'll, there could be little meters in front of them showing, them, showing them how accurate or not they're being without being horrible, you know, and um, ways of comparing what we do to what it should be. Um, I've also been doing a sight reading course with, through Rodolphus and lots of people would love to be able to sight read better and um, I'm determined to show people that they can. So that's another thing that I, I wouldn't have done without, um, without this. And I'm sure we can all talk about things that we wouldn't have done had it not for really be uh, there being necessity. Thanks, Ralph. We've got Rocco in Croatia saying, Konza, the anxiety of my neighbours hearing me singing loudly on the stage when I'm still learning a piece and there are mistakes. And that's that's kind of a big con with virtual choirs. We've all recording ourselves and we hear ourselves singing. And hopefully that means that we'll improve our technique by kind of re-recording, re-recording. But because you don't have this kind of safety net of all the singers around you, it does feel quite isolating at the time. Um, ben, it must be a, a really interesting experience for your choir because their young voices, they're training, so presumably they're all taking it in their stride really as, as a, a learning and development opportunity. Well there are so many things there that I resonate with that, that Sue and Ralph said and obviously with the National Youth Choirs we have the flagship choir which is 18 years and, and upwards but we also have training choir from age 15 to 18 and then girls and boys from aged uh, nine and ten um, and interestingly the ones who seem most confident with it are the youngsters um, the really young ones and that's probably to do of course with the fact that they spent so much of their school time um, learning to deal with with the technical side of it and of course they're they're much more savvy than we are um us dinosaurs have had to learn how to do a lot of new things um and interesting uh, what sue was saying about not being able to hear uh, the singers when you're leading it similarly of course um and the anxiety that one of the one of the callers was was talking about was being in a small room i mean if i was if i was being part of a choir i'm in a tiny studio here um, at home and I'm not in a large resonant building where I could sing feel I could sing properly so the danger is that we're not singing properly we're not using our voices in the right way remember also physically when we were saying in the first lockdown everybody was sort of bending down and just feeling sort of the weight of it physically and emotionally on top of us that we weren't out and we weren't able to stretch out I'm thinking of you know wonderful um uh, exercises that we do on our, on our choral courses and you know just not having the ability to do that with and share that with others um and also what ralph and sue were saying about weekly rehearsals i haven't had to do so much of that um my real experience is more to do with the recording bit that ralph was talking about um and in fact behind me you'll see i've got a little home studio here this is one of the positive things of lockdown is I actually had some time to set it up so I've been doing a lot of mixing of my own of National Youth Choir and London Youth Choir and other bits and pieces um, and it's really interesting mixing individual voices rather than an ambient recording of a full choir um, you, there are lots of tricks you can do you can put everybody in time on that T you can make everybody in tune, although you'd of course expect with your sing at home choir, they're all in tune anyway. But do you know what I mean? You can move things around and dare I say, you can even mute someone if they've got it really wrong, just tuck them out. Um, so that's been a really interesting part of my experience with, with, with virtual choirs. The, the one other thing to say was of course, that I think it's over 10 years ago since Eric Whitaker did his first virtual choir and we all marveled um, at what he did and then I think Virtual Choir 5 had 16,000 singers on it or something, something crazy. So when lockdown first happened, I got in touch with, with, with Eric's manager, Claire Long, and said, what's the amazing software that you use to create this? And they said, well, there isn't any. We don't know how. We've used YouTube and sticking plaster and string. Um, so someone is going to invent some amazing software and we were also saying about the latency problem there are new bits of software there's one called Jamulus apparently which is very good 
um, at having low latency so you can actually sing together. But I think it's only kind of maximum eight people. So if, you know, Sue's choir of 40 singers, it, it's just not going to work. But someone will invent it, you know, human ingenuity. It'll, it'll come in time. Indeed, I'm, I'm sure it, it's around the corner, really. Um, so Mia from Norway is saying a plus with virtual choirs, you get to sing something you like, even if it's not presently part of your current choir's repertoire. I think that's very, very apt. Um, Lawrence, uh, your experience is very particular because obviously in the Handel Festival, normally you're conducting in the come and sing, you're conducting people in the church in the space. And now you've got a whole load of virtual singers. And to Ben's point, you know, the editing takes out the stray consonants and things like that. So you're presented, if you like, with a quite a very well-behaved choir. Um, what do you think is the future of virtual choirs? What, what are your personal thoughts? Well, I mean, it's um, it is. I, I've been involved in that editing process too, and um, of course, it, there, there is something satisfactory about making sure all the T's are together, but. Also, of course, we must be careful we don't go too far that way because, um, you know, the, the joy of coming together is the fact that we're all human and we're, we're not perfect. Um, and so I, we've, we've got to keep that, that in mind. Um, but, but I think in terms of, of coming together for these things, the, the, um, the big pro is, is what, what we've been saying already, really, is that everyone can, can be from, from so many different places and not have even met each other and, and sing together. And that... that you know, I mean, obviously Handel is very dear to me and Messiah is, you know, a, a, a very, very special piece for me personally. Um, and it's wonderful to be able to share that with so many different people. Um, and I really hope we can can keep that that on. I mean, as Ralph says, it, it will also be useful. I think learning how to have rehearsed like this will be useful because it's very good discipline and you can get a lot done without the inconvenience of having to travel long distances or whatever, but um, it, it'll never replace uh, live music and, and that feeling of, of being together with your with your colleagues and your your friends. Um, but hopefully, it will um, make us appreciate that even more. But but also, I think it will be something that, that we can carry on um, and 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 cherish and and you know. <laughs> It's hard to think we'll ever be um, dewy-eyed and reminiscent of these times, but um, I think we will be actually. And you know, the, the the fact that we were able to take solace in each other remotely and to make beautiful music and 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 to to, to keep to keep going with that. So I I, I hope we can keep it going, um, but but still still have that um, the, the human the human part of it being very very real to us all. Absolutely. Thank, thank you, Lawrence. Um, so um, I'm going to ask my speakers now the final question. So if uh, on the call you get ready to put your questions in the chat and I'll kind of moderate that and pick out if, if there's a few questions that have a similar theme, I'll conflate them. But please, please get ready for that. And I've got a bonus question up my sleeve in, in case you're all uncharacteristically quiet at the beginning. Um, but I'll, I'll start with you, Lawrence, um, Mr. Handel himself <laughs> for in our time. Um, what do you think, what are the reasons for this, the enduring popularity of this piece? And I'll just preface this by saying, you know, the piece was premiered in Dublin in 1742. And here we are, here, there we were on the 3rd of December, 2020. And it's been viewed by 255,000 people all across the world. I mean, all the countries you would imagine, all the major English speaking countries, pretty much every country in Europe, but also the Philippines, Uzbekistan, Malaysia, India, you know, all kinds of places where people are really maybe listening to this piece for the first time, but certainly appreciating it. Um, so what do you think, what is your opinion? What, why did 255,000 people tune in to see this? What, um, what is the enduring popularity of this piece that was written centuries ago? Well, it's 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 humanity. It's it's it, this this piece. Messiah has everything um, about it that that is the essence of of being a human being. I mean, it it shows you. Um, I mean, I mean, just the, the way it's the way it's set as a sort of um, dramatic meditation, in a sense. Um, you know, unlike Handel's other oratorios, it doesn't have a, a through narrative, but it, it nonetheless has intrinsic drama throughout and Handel does what he does best which is to reach into the human soul and sort of f find things that that we can all identify with um, 
and the the the, the message of the piece of course um is resurrection and um i i think it we've we've had discussions in other forums about you know is it important to believe in anything i mean it really you can bring bring your own um beliefs to, to this piece and and transfer them i think because you know if, if you have any sense that there's a higher power out there then um you can really sort of lock in to the message of messiah i mean it shows hope um it shows how awful hum humans can be to each other and yet there is also always this per pervading air of hope and forgiveness and if we're kind and believe in in the inherent strength that we all have uh and and the goodness that we all can tap into in ourselves then we, we do reach enlightenment and, and resurrection and um also it's full of really good tunes i mean you know it's kind of it's it's um it's a great sing and it's a great listen you know it's it's it's, it's you you can you can always feel that the audience are are tapping the toes or humming along um and it, and it's you know some of the music is just so familiar to us the hallelujah chorus you know so many times um people have asked me what I do and I've explained oh I, I do a lot of handle and they say oh you look a bit blank and I and, and then you just sing hallelujah I think, oh that's my handle oh all right oh yeah I love that yeah and you know it's brilliant because that is it's, it's truly a universal um piece of music and and can reach everyone and I'm, I'm sure it will continue to be that um and of course I feel very privileged that you know I'm part of the continuing tradition of this amazing piece. Brilliant, thank you, thank you so much, Lawrence. Um, and and Ralph, I'll, I'll come to you next because you conduct choirs specifically in a religious context, and you also conduct secular choirs. Uh, have you uh, have you done Messiah with with you know what's your opinion about Messiah within a, a, a largely secular society? Oh, there's never any question about it. Nobody ever says. Um, and just talking about the same thing with my work with Pimlico Musical Foundation and schools in Pimlico and Inner Voices with um, state schools all over the southwest of London. We've done religious music. We've done a, um, we did um, an even song in St Paul's in, in which the anthem was taking mirth and cherishing of house. And we, and in all the time since I started doing those choirs until now, not a single parent, teacher, school administrator, um, senior management has said to me, um, do you realize that this is religious and some of our children are, don't share the Christian religion? And I put it the other way around, not one, you'd think one would, but I've been doing them for about eight years. Not one has, and I like to put it the other way. The, there was so much wonderful music written for the Christian church that it is our duty to share it. I love the expression, all faiths and none. And I love the expression, it's for all faiths and none. And I love Lawrence's thing, bring your beliefs with you. A taxi driver in Manchester that I was once talking to about what do you do? What music in, with your religion do you do? And blah, blah, blah. And we were comparing notes about chants and things and temples and all that. And, and as I got out of the taxi, he said to me at the end of the day, the God who brought you into this world and will take you away is the same as the God who brought me into this world and will take me away. And I absolutely love that. And that's what it's for. And Messiah is universal in that way. And it just speaks to all, all beliefs and no beliefs. It speaks to everybody and, and it's absolutely wonderful. Brilliant, thank you, thank you. Um, and Ben, I'll come to you next. And uh, again, you have singers who are probably singing the piece for the first time, and it's technically very challenging, Messiah. Uh, I mean, and it's a marathon if you're doing the whole thing from beginning to end. Um, and, and, and yet, as Lauren says, it's got some fantastic tunes, some beautiful melodies in there. So it's eminently singable. I mean, what kind of impressions do your young singers have of the piece? And, and Part of that is kind of the, the the answer to this question: Why does it have enduring popularity? Yeah. What what they said, um, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And in fact, um, because of the pandemic, I missed one of my favourite um, concerts of the year, which is the Youth Messiah in the Royal Albert Hall. Um, uh, we do it on the day, 
and uh, 2,000 children turn up um, and we do a, a slightly cut down version of the piece, but with an orchestra and with professional soloists. And it's just, it, it, I, on so many levels, it's just so heartwarming. And um, either the, the kids, they, they've learned the, the, the choruses over the course of their school term, and they can either learn all the choruses, and as Lawrence said, you know, there are so many great tunes there, you just keep going for ages, or they can they can go right down to just three, and I think it's um, And the Glory of the Lord, Hallelujah Chorus, and the final Amen. Um, but think of the final Amen, you know, it's really hard, it's really hard to sustain. Um, but, you know, there's something for everybody, and, and not least um, the universal appeal that, that Ralph and, and Lawrence have talked about, but on a musical level, it's just of such high quality and he, he just took a few weeks to write it, which is extraordinary in itself. Um, I don't know whether whether Sue and Ralph and Lawrence agree, but every time you do it, you always find a, a, a new bit or a new way of inflecting a phrase um, which you hadn't thought of before, or you hear a, a recording of it, or you go and hear the, the London Handle Orchestra doing it. And in fact, I'm, I'm stealing one of your things, Lawrence, for the next time I do it. You didn't double dot the overture uh, which is very interesting. I'd like to have a conversation with you about that. Um, but, you know, I, I, I rather enjoyed hearing a new take on it. And, and this piece is so unbelievably timeless. Um, I would like to know how many people in the world, I, I'm talking of the whole population, don't know a tune from Messiah. I mean, you mentioned Uzbekistan and, and various other far-flung countries. I think, like Lawrence was saying with the Hallelujah Chorus, I would imagine the majority of the population in the world would know what piece you're talking about if you went Hallelujah. I'm sure they would. Um, and that is an extraordinary um, accolade for a, for a Baroque composer who, 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 was a, who, who was from Germany and migrated over to this country. I mean, it's extraordinary on so many levels. And then the, the other thing that I love, just going back to Youth Messiah, is you can do a performance with I think that the, 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 the fewest I've done is eight singers and single strings um, and one trumpet. Um, and then you can go to do, um, in the evening of Youth Messiah, um, Brian Kay, wonderful um, conductor, does Messiah from scratch and has four and a half thousand singers with no rehearsal. And they just go for it. And I mean, it's, it's cacophony, of course, because <laughs> in the Royal Abbot Hall, because they can't sing together. And of course, that didn't happen last year. But I think the fact that you can go from such small numbers to such huge numbers, um, from youngsters singing at age six in the Youth Messiah to um, uh, senior citizens who have sung it more times than we've had hot dinners, I think is just testament to what an absolute masterpiece it is. Brilliant, thanks, Ben. Um, and Sue, uh, you, you've conducted Messiah with all different age groups, very experienced singers, very young singers. I'd be interested in the 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 experienced singers. I mean, how do you keep it fresh? And that's part of the the special DNA of the piece that you can, as Ben was just saying, you can sing it a million times and still hear something fresh each time yes, you sing. I, yeah, I do try to to come afresh to some of the choruses and, and really uh, look at it afresh and discuss it afresh and do it a slightly a slightly different way. But I had a wonderful experience and I just want to share it with everybody because um, Scunthorpe Choral Society have got our oldest members about 94 and we've got people in there that have sung the Messiah for for decades and we put in the Scunthorpe Cooperative Junior Choir to share a rehearsal with us and it was the first time uh, we're doing Surely and With His Stripes and it was the first time that the kids had heard the orchestra we put it on and I watched and all these tiles were bopping so we had these nine to nine, 18 year olds bopping to Shirley and singing along next to people that had sung it, you know, for, for generations almost, you know, that had been there, they'd done it for the last 50, 60 years. And they were watching all these kids bopping. And it was absolutely wonderful. The kids kind of affected the, the, the um, more senior um, uh, adults that were singing it for about the 30th time. And, and, but the kids were so, you know, so excited about it. We all got excited about it. It was wonderful to watch that moment on the tiles, every, all these kids bopping along to show surely marvelous well it, it's it's very rhythmic of course as well it is, absolutely they just did it they just kind of that's what they felt they needed to do so that was fine by me <laughs> great thank you 
So over to our audience for some chat. Um, the Vivian Wills um, has asked about nerves and overcoming nerves. Um, and if there's one tip you would give to, to a singer, hi Vivian, um, who, who it just is incredibly nervous and, and obviously it's a very exposing thing to record yourself uh, in isolation. Um, if there's one tip that you would all give her, and all of us, we're all nervous, of course. Yes. Um, one thing we forget is, is breathing, um, particularly as singers. And I, I would just think a little bit more about regulating your breathing, particularly when you're, as I would say, singing in a small room. Nerves is it's a horrible thing, isn't it? And someone says, sing this by yourself, and suddenly your breath goes completely, shortness of breath. So if you could regulate your breath a little bit more, I think that would really, really help you, Vivian, um, particularly, as I say, in, in, in a small, confined space. But just think about the breathing and giving yourself that, that wonderful feeling of being able to fill up with air and use that air, sing on the air as, as, you, as you sing out. Any more tips? Ralph? Breathing, breathing certainly helps. If one can um, train one's mind, this is a long-term thing, really, to think of anything other than oneself, because we're self-conscious at that time, and we all know that feeling of being nervous. I know it very well. But if you can choose one of two things, or both things, to concentrate on before you start singing, one is the music you say isn't this wonderful music isn't it wonderful music isn't it you keep saying music oh yes that's better i love this music is better i love this music i love this better and then the other thing is concentrating on the people you're going to sing to and you're you're going to um increase their joy by doing it so this is lovely music i'm increasing their joy and if you can do that then you can keep take your mind off yourself. Brilliant. What a wonderful tip. Thanks, Ralph. <laughs> Anyone else? Sue, Lawrence, anything? Lawrence? I just come in. Well, actually, one of the things I have been doing in lockdown is, is um, I've been I've enrolled on a course on performance anxiety. And um, it's been so interesting um, because I, I just read about it. It's run by Martin Lawrence, who's um, a horn player. Um, and uh, I think we, as Ralph says, I mean, we all have these issues of, of performance anxiety and nerves, and um, it's a question of, 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 of dealing with it. And, and as, as he said, um, the, the thing to do is to focus on the music. But um, the thing that I found most useful, I'm actually in the middle of doing the course, um, the thing I find nerve wracking is solo playing, solo harpsichord playing, if I'm just on my own, because I, I'm aware suddenly that there are lots of voices in my head. And I think we all have those voices that we listen to, particularly when you're recording uh, and on your own, you can get very self-conscious because of course you are on your own. And I've always tried to think, oh, just don't listen to the voices, think about the music. But actually, um, sometimes it's helpful to engage with the voice. And you know, if, you, if there's a voice that's saying, I don't think you're very good at doing this. This is the difficult bit, isn't it? You just say, well, no, it's not. I am, I've, I know it's difficult, but I've actually been working on this bit. This is the bit I've been working on. So thank you for, the, for, the, for that suggestion. But actually, no, I can do this. And if I remember the music, I'm gonna show you that I can do it. So just be aware that it's perfectly normal to have insecurities and to feel that you're not absolutely on top of it, but you are always more prepared than you think you are. So engage with that insecurity that you have and, and take charge of it. Um, and that's a work in progress. I'm not saying I've, I've got there yet, but it's, it's quite, it's been a really useful, interesting tool to, to just to, to, to think, what are we here for? And as Ralph says, you know, we're, we're, we're the vessels really, aren't we? We're here to make the music for the listeners. That's our, our duty. So let's just do it and, and overcome, overcome our internal fears. Thanks, Lawrence. I mean, Vivian, the, the, the thing is that if you weren't nervous, it means you don't care that you're complacent. And that is not the basis for a good performance. You have to really put your heart and soul into it. And the fact you are nervous, we all get nervous, just as a manifestation that you're committed to this. Um, Sue, is there anything you want Thank to Thank you all so much. Yeah, Sue, do you have anything to say? Um, well, 
Yes, I, I, if I make a mistake, I try not to dwell on it. I try to sort of put it out my mind straight away because if I start, particularly, I'm having to play the piano on Zoom at the moment and it's not my finest hour, really, uh, when I do that. And if I make a mistake and I start to dwell on it, I begin to feel nervous about what I'm doing. So I just say, forget it, it's gone, it's done. Let's move on and keep kind of thinking forward. I think that's the only tip I can think. Don't dwell on your mistakes. Who cares? If I dwelled on my, if I was to do that, I would give up. So it's just been very, very revealing, like horribly revealing to hear my, my voice. You know, I've never done that before. Never, really. I've never just, uh, you know, just recorded myself without any background music or anything. It's just well, really... well done for doing it, Vivian. Yeah. That's brilliant. Absolutely. And I, I have to say that I finally sent off the one last video. I, I had already sent off the audio uh, for the um, the one piece. And I'm an eye roller. It's horrible. There's one part that I eye rolled because I came in a little bit early. And just, oh, but you I, see, it doesn't I, matter. It doesn't I, matter. They can move it. But it those little tiles. But the thing is, Vivian, it, yes, but it shows it shows you're human and you're alive, which is, you know, wonderful. I saw that eye roll and I said, that's it. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> it will look wonderful on the 5th of April, I'm sure, Vivian. I so will. We, I'm going to stick with you guys. I want to do it better. That's all I know. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. So we have a question from Ruth Evans from National Youth Choirs, and she says, if you could only take one section of Messiah to your desert island, which chorus, aria or instrumental section would it be? And she says also, if you also want to throw in which recording, feel free. Gosh. You see, this, is my, this is my wonderful colleague, Ruth, who's the head of artistic planning. And what a qu I mean, how can we possibly choose friends and colleagues. It's, I, I saw that in the chat and I thought, oh, Ruth, what have you done? <laughs> um, I'll, let my, I'll let my esteemed colleagues go first while I have a think. <laughs> Look at them all. <laughs> Come on, Lawrence, you're the conductor. I was going to make friends. Okay, well, I'll go first. I, 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 I've got my answer totally straight away. Um, I mean, it, it is totally Sophie's choice, isn't it, with a lot, a lot of children. But um, it's, for me, it's got to be the Amen. Yeah, and I'm one. I'm gonna I'm gonna put it out there to the sing at home choir. Uh, it's gonna be um, the recording from Easter Monday. Brilliant, very tactful. Thank you, Lawrence. Um, does anyone else want to? Don't feel you have to come in panel, but have you got a particular favourite aria or favourite recording? I mean, it could be a very old okay. one that you listen to. As okay, a I mean, he shall feed his flock is beautiful, and I think the the oh, second yeah. version, or possibly it was the third version, where he brings in the soprano, because it was the original version was just in uh, F major, wasn't it, Lawrence? I think that's right, alto. Alto, yeah. but then he had another master stroke, and he did a different version where it modulates up a fourth into B flat major and it's just one of the most heavenly bits um, hearing soprano singing come unto him all ye that labour um, and also clever about that is that is the play on words because of course the original quote is come unto me and he put it in the third person which is another brilliant thing as well um, yeah I, I think just that lovely lilting <laughs> it's just it's just complete heaven um, so I, I won't be invidious and choose out a recording, but I guess I should say Dunedin Consort because it was a group that I started. <laughs> it's not my recording, but um, John Butt, who, who took over from me as a wonderful scholar uh, um, of the Baroque music and, and, and knows um, as much as Lawrence does, I think, um, about the... Oh, much uh, more. Well, he's just brilliant. And <laughs> he's, it's, he's incredible. Yeah, he's, he's amazing. He's as mad as an onion, but he's, he's wonderful. Um, so yeah, He Shall Feed His Flock is my choice. Wonderful. Sue, Ralph. Um, I know that my Redeemer liveth, the soprano solo. It's just gorgeous. Yes. Yeah. And has sometimes been sung by a tenor, he said, as a tenor. Right. The great flexibility of Handel, isn't it? Um, I, I was taught singing by Ina Mitchell, and they, they, it is said that her I know that my Redeemer liveth was fantastic. Yeah. Marvellous. Ralph, do you have a favourite? Passive. Well, I agree with Ben, actually, and I, I love that. I can't really remember which key, but mm. those bits just, oh, absolutely melt me. But one moment, which I really love is, he delights, oh no, if he delights. 
Then tenor gets up and beautiful string chord. I rebuke. Oh, that moment is just so clever. So it's moments really for me, the, you know, you can't pick up moments. Pick that wouldn't be a off. good moment without the rest of the piece, of course. And, I, um, and the start of the piece, because as it starts, I think, oh, we're in for a wonderful two hours. That's three choices, Ralph. You've now got <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, thank you. We, we've actually come to the end of, uh, we've, we've done an hour, uh, which is the hour has just flown by. Thank you so much to all the panelists for your wonderful, wonderful insights. And thank you all of you for joining this event and for being part of this project. Um, we will be um, sending out details of how you can watch it on the 5th of April. But as I say, the 3rd of December event is still on YouTube, which you can go back and watch. Um, uh, and we look forward to, we will be doing more of these choral directors in conversation. And again, you will all receive details. So, um, Please show your appreciation for our panel by just posting something in the chat. And if I could ask you to leave the event, I'm not going to boot you all out, but if all you could all leave gracefully, um, that would be marvellous. And have a great evening. See you all soon, hopefully. Bye. Bye.